feel this little ball. I can feel it going. This is in your now. cheekbone. So as we look at this, we take some away. There's ligaments that are parts of that capsule, and you take more away, and we're just looking like we're doing a dissection, so to speak, through this. This is ligaments and blood vessels and nerve endings, and this is the disc, this little blue thing. It's kind of a little barbell-shaped or bow tie-shaped. This is the ball portion of the lower jaw. This is the front rim of the socket and the top of the socket. And these are muscles and all kinds of tissue that pull this joint around. Okay. And this is the normal closed position for a joint. It's loaded where that pressure is in that. 95% of the time, when you're just sitting here in this room or we're sitting at any time in our life, this is the way the joint should look, slack. The jaw is resting, the teeth are apart, and the joint is loose setting. Fluids can move in here, its nutrients are then transferred, it's a healthy joint. You now what, is this just ligaments or what goes back through? Is blood vessels, nerve endings, and all in main here. nerve endings to the joint and vessels come in from the back. Okay. So if we back up a step, and look at this. This is what it is when you bite your teeth together. It's loaded. That's about 5% of the day. Okay. Then in this, in this next one, a little clicker used to work here. In this next one, there we go. It is loose, and this is the way it should be at rest. So your That's jaw just is when slack. your jaw is hanging on. It's the term slack jaw. Okay. Okay. People use that colloquialism. And then as you go along with this, we see that when you open, the ball comes completely out of this socket, and here's the disc, now looks like a little bow tie, stretches these ligaments, it creates a pump. It causes blood flow to be pumped in and out of the joint. So the movement of the joint is necessary for the health of the joint. So a limited movement joint is gonna be a much more unhealthy joint. The tolerances in the temporomandibular joint are very small. Actually, that's joints only about the size of the knuckle on your thumb. It's not a very big joint. On this screen, it looks very large, and as we go back through this sequence, you can see the parts move in different ways and there's very minimal tolerances. It's one of the reasons that this joint, when it gets in trouble, can cause ear pain next door to it. It can cause eye pain because it's on the same nerve circuit as one of the ophthalmic divisions of the trigeminal nerve. It has many effects on the throat. It has effects on headaches, temple headaches, neck, head, neck pain, neck aches, base of the skull pain, migraines, all types of head, neck, and facial pains that go along with this, as well as the dysfunction you can have in your jaw from these things. I'm just, real quick, you had the ear pain, right? You, you had the ear pain. I had the ear pain. Did, did anybody show you anything like this when you were going to the doctors for your ear pain? No, I just went because I had a really bad earache, or I thought I had an earache. It wasn't constant, but I would be driving or anywhere and just feel like somebody was taking a pencil and stabbing it in my ear. And you, you know, for like 30 seconds or so, and then it would release. And, and you told me you had ear, they gave you drops? No, I didn't have the drops but they just said I didn't have an ear earache and that I probably needed to see a dentist. And so that's why I came to see Dr. Towery. Well, Mike, unfortunately, it can manifest itself in many different ways. Some people have pain and many people don't have pain. They may have noise and their jaw may not move correctly, but they may have no pain. Others have extreme pain, migraines, headaches, neck aches, facial pains. And so because of the variety of things that it portrays itself at, it's frequently called the great imposter. And that term's been used for decades as a concept of a problem that mimics one uh, another problem. So it may appear to be an ear problem, it may appear to be a headache problem of other origins, but it is all related to the TMJ problem. And that great imposter then is something that we have to uh, resolve by dealing with these patients and dealing with them because uh, in an office where you have qualified, trained people to do this, because not everybody understands how to deal with that in medicine or dentistry. Okay, so, so obviously she was Am I to understand she was pushing back into here, which was making that? This is a very common problem. We see this every day in our practice. People come in with symptoms that have been misdiagnosed or undiagnosed that are related to some kind of a trauma incident of some si sort. It can be a motor vehicle accident, falls, blows, injuries, uh, soccer ball, it can be football, it can be gymnastics, falls, and in issues that uh, injure and strain the neck and jaw are very common. And the, even medical procedures can do that. Somebody in here, you, I think, had surgery. No, I was about to have ear surgery. Well, somebody, you, you would have, somebody, oh, no. oh, no, no, it was you. you. You said you'd had, not ear surgery, you'd had some type of surgery. Oh, yes. And I you'd been put out. Yes. Okay, and they, and when they put you out, they uh, intubate, where they put the tube down, and I've watched that. Mm -hmm. They, they, can that cause the jerking down of the jaw? Because you had symptoms start right after that. Yes, right after that, my symptoms started. Mm -hmm. And I had excruciating ear pain. And I went to several ear, ear doctors, and I 
did the antibiotics. I was on seven antibiotics at seven different times. They told me I had an ear infection in my left or right ear or both the ears. Either they were inflamed or they were closing or either they were too moist or too dry. So when they were too moist, I had to wear the ear plugs. And then when they were too dry, I had to add the oil. When he, I take it you, you've been through treatment, you said, you told yes. me you were Once he treated you, did you have to wear the plugs or the oil or the? No more oils, no more plugs, no more anything, so no just more antibiotics, no more pain pills. With a, with a little piece of plastic? little piece of plastic. Okay, well, we're going to get to that. Don't mean to interrupt you, but I, I want to verify the... Okay, well, back to the joint. How, does, is intubation one of the causes? Yes, Mike, intubation can cause this. It's not common, but it does happen. Usually there's a little predisposition. You have something that's not working really well with your jaw, but it's not giving you trouble, and the intubation pushes you over the edge and creates a problem for you. And uh, it can end up uh, oftentimes with your jaw getting stuck open. Yeah, now I wouldn't have believed that except now it's your, you're going to get and you told me the story about calling your friends and trying to talk to them and I felt bad I made a little fun of you but your jaw got stuck open it did um, I had never heard about TMJ or TMD or anything of the sort um, I didn't have any pain um, I just was at home alone and um, my jaw stuck open and you literally could not close your mouth literally I mean I tried forcing it I tried pulling it, I tried moving it, I tried, I, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't figure out what was going on and I tried calling people on the phone, but they couldn't understand me because I, ah ha, 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 ha. Right. And <laughs> so several right. hours later, after you know manipulating and pulling and doing everything I, I could imagine that I could do to get my mouth closed, I was able to, to get it to close, and I called my dentist, and he said, oh boy, I think you need to go see Dr. Tally, and, and here I am. So obviously that happens, and, and will you treat that by getting it back and just getting it? Yeah, there are special ways that you can do it. Some are easier than others. Some people wind up in the hospital, but it's easy to do, and people can do it to themselves by using their fingers in their mouth on their back teeth and get the jaw back in place. Once it's back in place, you're going to be really, really sore. And one of the things you have to really watch for is because a lot of these people also have noise from their joints. They'll pop or click. And popping and clicking shouldn't be ignored because it can become a really big problem. And it's one of the reasons an awful large number of patients come to see us. So it's not good if your joint pops? No. I think, yeah, we're going to talk to you because she had you, and, and she's very, not very young, but she's a young lady. And, and, and I meet young ladies across the country. You couldn't open your mouth. Yeah, I was popping a lot, and I, I mean, I could stand next to my mom and open my mouth every time. I go, "Did you hear that?" And she'd say, "Yes." I was like, "That was my jaw." And um, over the years, um, I was never in pain. I never had headaches. I didn't have an accident. Um, it just just stop. But it could have. She's young still. Over time, would that have eventually started to lead to headache and pain? Maybe. Eventually. Okay. Okay. So go ahead. Sorry, let uh, me interrupt you. And then. In the past like nine months, it stopped popping and would lock when I would chew or talk and it would get stuck. And so um, I got to the point where I couldn't open my mouth unless I moved it to the left first and then open. So you learned somehow if you pushed your jaw over, so you take a bite, push your jaw over, and then you could get your mouth closed. Or open. Or open. In my case. Yeah. So continue on. So, um, so one. The, d I knew the dentist knew about my problem, and but since I didn't have pain, they didn't. They were. They hadn't referred me yet. And then when I was laying there in the chair, and I, they noticed how I had to maneuver my mouth. They said, "Okay, you need to go oh, see someone." Nice. And they yeah. referred me to Doctor. Yeah, I, I can understand at that point they might think there was a problem. <laughs> this is not normal. So. Yeah. So you got treated. And I take it now your jaw is yes. working fine. I. It doesn't lock. Um, it doesn't pop. Wouldn't that be scary that you just never knew when it was going to happen? I know, because I have one friend who, that happened to her, she opened her mouth in, to yawn and it got stuck. And luckily that never happened to me, but. Just because I go to my dentist regularly or I go to my family doctor regularly, I, you know, I was under the, the impression that as long as I'm going regularly, they would spot something and know if something was wrong with me, I must be okay. My jaw's popping, but the dentist doesn't say anything about it. 